Hi, welcome to Scottish Wine Channel. I'm Neil Thomas Douglas and I'm a wedding photographer. Well, I started off as a music photographer uh, and then I moved into weddings, uh, mainly because I love shooting people. And uh, yeah, what better way to do it on a wedding day when they're all looking their best and stuff. Then, uh, yeah, I started developing my own style and uh, I started, uh, yeah, just, just doing it a bit differently. And that's really worked well for me. I've recently shot weddings as far afield as Thailand. And uh, this year I'm, I'm overseas a couple more times. And yeah, it's just my dream job and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, I think about a year before the wedding, uh, at least a year before the wedding, uh, I find that I, I, I'm all booked up for this year, I'm still getting inquiries for this year and uh, I can see them struggling to, to find, you know, so uh, the person that they want to shoot their wedding. If they want a, a big variety to pick from of different styles of wedding photographers, then I'd recommend at least a year uh, before they're getting married. Uh, different wedding photography styles are uh, repetage, so more candid nature, the photographer just sitting back documenting the day. Then you get more traditional style, which is your classic wedding photos, uh, so really nice and clean images. And uh, then you get alternative, which is just something a little bit different, a wee bit edgier. What you do get though is photographers that will do all three. So I'd say about 80% of my coverage is repetage. I uh, throw in a bit of traditional uh, shots in there and then I do something a wee bit different at the end. Some photographers will offer a half day package. So you've really got to think, uh, do you want the full day or half day? So uh, do you want the speeches covered? Do you want uh, the first dance covered? Do you want party shots? For me, I love doing first dance and party shots. I think they're really great. But uh, if you're on a bit of a budget, then maybe uh, the half day up until a uh, couple shoot is, is good for you. What couple should consider when picking a photographer? They should consider that the style of photography matches their style of wedding. So for example, if you've got a vintage wedding, then uh, maybe you'd want to pick a, a photographer who does a vintage style photos. I feel it's really important that you get on with your photographer as well. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time with them on the wedding day. And uh, yeah, there's good, it's important that there's a, there's a connection there. When researching a photographer, uh, it's really nice to go on wedding blogs because you see a full day. So you see if, uh, the photographer working at different parts of the day. It's also really good if you ask your photographer to see a, a few examples of a full wedding, perhaps maybe even at the venue that you're getting married at. And then you can also get ideas uh, for shots that you might like, you know, if you get uh, examples of it from your actual wedding venues. Uh, on, on the day of the wedding, uh, let's speak for myself, I, I would normally uh, turn up about uh, two and a half hours before the ceremony. And that's just to get bridal prep shots. Uh, so it's completely candid at that point, so I'm not asking for any post shots. I just sit back and let the day unfold and take some candid shots. I used to do groom prep, uh, but I don't do that anymore because they're just sitting about in their pants drinking beer and stuff usually. So uh, what I do is I leave bridal prep about half an hour before the ceremony and I feel it's better to capture the groomsmen then when they're waiting for the bride to arrive. Uh, that means that I can get the bride arriving as well. So then I shoot the ceremony uh, and uh, again that's just completely candid. I even do the signing of the register candid now as well, so it's no stopping and for the awkward shot where they're pretending to sign, you're actually allowed to do it while they sign now, so you can just do it completely natural. And after the ceremony, uh, we go on to group shots. With group shots, people, a lot of people worry about this part of the day because they think it's going to take ages and stuff. My general rule is it's about three minutes per group shot. So I say to my bride, look, I can do as many as you want, I don't mind, but it is going to take three minutes per group shot. So it just gives them a, a, a way to understand how long it's going to spend on their day. After the group shots are done, I take the couple away and do a couple shoot. That lasts about, about half an hour. So uh, do the couple shoot and that's just uh, really fun shots and uh, 
yeah, after that, uh, cover the speeches. Uh, again, that's just back to Candid. And then you've got your first dance. And I usually stay for a couple of songs after the first dance, just to get some party shots as well. And then before I leave, I normally get a shot. I call it one for the road. So the venue looks different at night. Everything looks different at night. So I always get a little shot before I leave. And what you'll find then is the bride and groom might have had a, little, a few drinks. So they're a lot uh, more relaxed. Uh, all the formalities are out of the way. And you get some really, really nice shots at night. Obviously, you've spent a lot of time and research and money on picking your venue. Uh, you tell your photographer why you picked your venue, then they can uh, put that into your photographs. So you might have picked uh, uh, your venue because it had an amazing staircase, but if you don't tell your photographer that, there might be a chance that you don't get that shot that you wanted on your staircase. So yeah, just be absolutely clear to them uh, why you picked the venue because it was a really important choice of your wedding planning and they'll tie that in with your wedding photos. So the key shots that a couple should consider are uh, bridal preparation shots, uh, the bride arriving, uh, the ceremony, just make sure you get permission from the celebrant or whoever is conducting the service, then the group shots, uh, couple shoot, speeches, first dance and a couple of party shots after the first dance as well. Yeah, so you picked your wedding photographer uh, uh, next stage uh, would be I send out a wedding photography plan which gives me all the information that I need for the day so timings, group shot lists and a little box for anything else extra so maybe why you like your venue and stuff and if you've got a particular shot in mind. So you fill out the, the photography plan and then uh, we meet for an engagement shoot. Now an engagement shoot is just a really fun kind of relaxed uh, photo shoot. It's just to get you used to being in front of the camera and obviously you get to see how your photographer works as well. So it can be anywhere, it can be a walk in the park with a dog, I've done a paintball fight before, it can be anything, it's just a bit of fun, just to get used to being photographed by a professional. If some photographers include it in the package, other photographers charge a little bit extra, I would highly recommend an engagement shoot, because you might not, the amount of brides I get that say, uh, I hate getting my photo taken, but it's maybe because they've never had their photo taken by a professional before. So this will get rid of any anxieties you might have about photography on the day. And yeah, it'll just, yeah, it's good to work with your photographer before the day. So 100% uh, recommend engagement shoots. After the engagement shoot, uh, I, and I'm going to tie in uh, with the engagement shoot. So we'll go for a coffee. Uh, we'll sit down and we'll go over the filled out plan together. So we'll just make sure we're uh, both on the same uh, sheet, you know, so we know what's going on in the day. Then you get married and we take lots of pretty photographs. <laughs> I'd advise asking your photographer before uh, booking about what you get. So some, some photographers will offer uh, a digital files where you can download them, you can make your own prints, you can share them with friends and family. Other photographers will limit the number of images you get, so maybe you get 100 images but you can buy more. Some photographers, you don't get the digital images, uh, but that's quite rare now. So sometimes you'll get uh, photographers uh, who'll charge, so you've got a website going and you have to buy prints. Other ones you'll get where you can uh, just download the prints, uh, the files for free and make your own prints and stuff. It depends on what time of year you get married at. Uh, so obviously in June, July, August, I'm a lot busier. Uh, so it's maybe about four to six weeks to get your digital images. Uh, so I put them on a website and uh, you can download the images from there. High resolution images, uh, no watermarks, you know, you and your friends can all download them. If it's winter, you might get them within two weeks, you know, it just depends. But as a general guideline, they will be with you within six weeks. Then after you've got your images, if you wanted an album, uh, just con some photographers have it in, in their package. So they'll contact you, but if not, and ask your photographer for the album prices. When uh, making an album, uh, the photographer will do his best to uh, put an order of the day, so it's like a storybook. So it tells the story of the day, uh, and they'll send you a proof, so you can read through it and make any changes. Thanks for watching, I hope it was really helpful, and uh, I really hope you have a fabulous wedding and get amazing photographs. <laughs>